in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we lay our crown and worship you be lifted above. King of Kings, Majesty, we bless you. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. To you be all the praise. Someone bless him. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. We worship you. Now ask him for an encounter this night. Give me an encounter even by your spirit. Give me an encounter even by your word. Give me an encounter by your spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. So that you don't confuse him with other spirits. There are many spirits, but he is that spirit. And he says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You know he is that spirit because of what follows his presence. The Bible says if it is true that he is that spirit, then you expect liberty. Hallelujah. Every gathering by the spirit of God is a feast of light. The Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man. If it is the true light, the benefit is to every man. That was the true light that lighted every man, not some men. When it has to do with the administration of the light that comes from his word, it is for every man. The same Lord is rich unto all. That means you must expect an encounter with the light of God. That was the true light that lighted every man. There are false lights. They carry 
a semblance of liberty they carry a semblance of knowledge but they do not sustain the power to lift because you arise and shine if your true light comes so if you claim to have received the light and you still remain there you did not receive the true light light sustains the power to lift light sustains the power to drive away darkness john 1 5 the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah yes so if it is the true light it sustains the power to lift spirit of the living god we submit to your wisdom we declare that outside of your help we are only wasting our time it is only in your light that we see light you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger shall give you we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that are always speak to us tonight by your spirit and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please give Jesus a big hand clap. And then you may be seated. We bless the Lord for the privilege that he's given to us again. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. To the house of the Lord many things happen in the house of the Lord among them is an encounter with the God of the Bible I said I think it was last week there is no guarantee that you will always meet a man in his office no he comes and he leaves there is no guarantee that you will find a man at a recreation center all the time he comes and he leaves but if you stay at a man's house and you are patient, eventually you will find him. Because the house of every man is his final resting place. So when he calls us his house, when he calls this place his house, then he covenants with himself that this shall be my house forever. Hallelujah. We appreciate all who are connecting from across the globe. May the Lord bless you. A global family the Lord will do you good in Jesus name and for all who have come from across the world and are here present may the Lord bless you in Jesus name just to honor a few people and then we'll get straight to the word hallelujah we're honored again and happy to have his majesty the Olu of worry and his dear wife her majesty God bless you sir God bless you ma and then Dear man of God, Apostle Tommy Arayomi, let's give him a big God bless you. Hallelujah. And honored and grateful to have Apostle Babs in our midst from Joss. God bless you. Thank you. Reverend Vindi Olu from Enugu, see here. God bless you. And every man, woman of God here, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. We began discussing along the theme and the prophetic word that was given to us by God this year. That is a year of open doors. It says, I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it. You recall that we said doors usually come closed by default. And we must understand the spiritual dynamics that is allocated to 
the ministry of open doors we did say that there are three ways to open doors according to scripture number one is by engaging the right keys i'm doing a recap so that um, we follow along with our discussion for tonight you need to have the right key to open doors number two the second way the bible describes that doors can be open is by the art of knocking the bible says in matthew 7 from verse 7 and 8 it says knock and it shall be opened verse 8 says for everyone that knocketh to him that knocketh it says it shall be opened we said that knocking means that there is someone at the other side of the door who has the ability to open that door. And number three, by the ministry of the supernatural, as we find in the life of Paul and Silas. The Bible says they prayed, they sang, and there was an earthquake. And the Bible says when it came, no key was used, no knocking happened, but all doors opened hallelujah and then we took our time to discuss exceeding great and precious promises as a way of buttressing on our understanding we said keys in this kingdom represent light knowledge and that we must be able to know what is there for us in christ it says whereby has he given to us these great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then last week, we looked further into the subject of knocking by understanding the power of relationships. For you to knock means that you do not have the key, but you need the door opened. And you must be able to understand strategic relationships Otherwise, the door will not be opened. We examine the parable of Jesus buttressing or knocking and asking that there was a man who came to his friend by night and said, friend, please arise and give me three loaves. Another friend has come and I'm about to be embarrassed because I do not have supplies. And he says, sorry, you need to leave. It is late. I cannot wake up. And we did look at that scripture that under a certain condition, the friend woke up and gave him as many as he desired please do take out time to listen to these teachings they are meant to give us light true light indeed hallelujah tonight's teaching will bless you yet again and i'm trusting that it will add to our knowledge and strengthen us in the spirit giving us capacity to access open doors in the name of jesus it's a very interesting teaching tonight because now you will begin to learn how to manage doors that are opened um, it is one thing to contend to get doors opened but if and when those doors are opened it's important that we are equipped with the intelligence to know how to manage open doors and to know that which is expected if and when doors are open so are you ready for tonight Matthew chapter 6, please, deliver us from evil. I'm teaching tonight on the subject, deliver us from evil. As an attempt to help us understand the implication of open doors, it is one thing to desire that doors be opened, but there are prophetic implications if and when doors do open. And many believers are not equipped holistically to understand the prophetic implication of open doors that every time doors are open unto a man in the spirit doors are open unto a man across the cosmos there are implications and we must be equipped to know what to do with the challenges that come as a result of open doors matthew chapter 6 please let's begin our reading from verse 5 we know this as the Lord's Prayer. When you read Luke's synoptic account, it was the disciples who came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray, they said, as John taught his disciples. That was not a subject of prayerlessness. I have taught you 
their their request was accuracy in prayer they were prayerful people but they discerned and they discovered that their prayers did not produce results there was something about the character and the structure of the prayers of jesus and they said jesus were tired of shadow boxing in the place of prayer teach us how to pray as john taught his disciples so Jesus began to lay a few foundations about hypocrisy and so on and so forth. Now let's go to verse 6. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 6. It says, But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and thy Father which is in secret shall reward you openly. Verse 7. Now. He says, when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard because of their much speaking. Verse, be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Verse 9, after this manner, now pay attention. He didn't say by this recitation. He was showing a spiritual protocol to prayer. The recitation may be profitable, but the power is not in the chanting or the recitation. That this right here is a ladder that captured within it is a code that can help men accent realms of prayer. Are we together? I'm not necessarily teaching on prayer, but this is to lay a foundation and then we get to our subject. He now says, pray after this manner. Number one, our Father. I've taught you again, but let me recap. Our Father means that when you approach God, you must approach Him with an understanding that He is Abba. The word Abba means source, sustainer, protector, defender. That means if you approach God with a mindset of other alternatives, your prayer is already corrupted. You must approach Him knowing that except and unless He helps you, help cannot come from any other place. Are we together? our father number two it says which art in heaven that means faith will be required in your approach to prayer because you are discussing with a spirit that is in a dimension that is not earthly are we together he is everywhere but which art in heaven and in as much as you are seated with christ but physically speaking at the point where the need is required is at this domain of his kingdom so you will need to understand the subject of faith number three hallowed be your name that you approach him with the spirit of reverence paying attention to the various dimensions that are captured in his office because one of the ways that we learn God are through his names the names of God represent the multifaceted dimensions of God that are captured in his names that you approach him with the spirit of reverence number 10 verse 10 now thy kingdom come notice that there are six points captured in jesus's prayer three have to do with god and three have to do with man for god it is hallowed be your name his name thy kingdom come thy will be done so his name his kingdom and his will and then when it has to do with man your daily bread the forgiveness of sins and then deliverance from evil are we together now six points captured in the prayers of jesus then he says let's go back to verse 12 please or 11 where did we stop so we continue from there give us 10 let's start afresh thy kingdom come he says and your kingdom only comes when your will is done in earth as it is in heaven remember Everywhere the will of God is accurately executed, his kingdom comes. And the will of God is captured in his word as revealed by the Spirit and as written in Scripture. Are we together now? That when the will of God finds expression, his kingdom comes within that sphere. He says, in earth, the first earth being you, the earthen vessel, and then your environment. Verse 11 now, he says, give us this day. It is amazing how Jesus is teaching that God is very meticulous and he's not only concerned about your future, he's concerned about this day. The fatherly character of God is such that he does not just focus on the future alone. Every day matters to him. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Your bread means all that is necessary for your sufficiency. 
as far as your kingdom adventure is concerned are we together wisdom is bread favor is bread relationships is bread he said give us this day that which is needed for my supplies for my sufficiency are we together verse 12 it says and forgive us our debts or trespasses as we forgive our debtors now verse 13 it says lead us not into temptation i'm not teaching about the first part otherwise we would have a very serious discussion to do there because when you read this from the king james expression uh it seems to negate other aspects of scripture god does not lead people in temptation are we together the bible says and every man apostle james was teaching he says when he's tempted let him not say i was tempted of god for god does not tempt men with evil remember that every man is tempted according to his lust so he says lead us not into temptation he was talking about something entirely different that was not properly captured in the translation but here is my point of emphasis for tonight he says but deliver us from evil Jesus is teaching the people how to pray that it should be captured within the context of your prayer the prayer to be delivered from evil something will always happen to you if your daily bread has come there is an implication to the arrival of your daily bread are we together now notice the order that when you reverence God on the strength of that you have a right to place a demand that I should be given my daily bread immediately daily bread comes he begins to talk of many many things forgiveness avoidance of temptation and deliverance from trouble all tied to the arrival of daily bread are we together now there are many troubles and challenges that come into the life of the believer only on account of open doors most people have this understanding that the moment you are not excelling in the spirit that is the only time when challenges can come and buffet you but that there is a dimension of troubles and challenges that befall a believer on account of your excelling in the spirit and on account of the doors that have now been opened unto you and if you do not understand that such a reality exists in the spirit as you'll be learning you will be ignorant on how to manage open doors and that which was meant to be a blessing ends up becoming a curse there are many people who have no business with certain troubles except and unless that certain doors were opened and they were not holistically mentored to know what to do with open doors are we learning now so there are battles in life that only open doors bring. Once your door is closed, you do not even know that such battles exist. It will take your doors open to now be exposed to that reality of life. Let's look at a scripture and then I would now begin to discuss. In Acts chapter 16, are we learning already? Verse 11, Acts chapter 16, please give us from verse 11. The Bible says, not verse 1, 11, yes. It says, therefore, speaking now about um, the apostles, it says, therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to all of that name, and the next day to Neapolis, verse 12. And from thence to Philippi. Now watch this. They are right, Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony and we were in that city abiding certain days let's continue it says and on the sabbath we went out into the city by a riverside where prayer was one to be made and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted hither he's, he's narrating a story now and a certain woman so they went out and found a woman called lydia the bible called her a seller of purple she was a wealthy woman a woman obviously of royalty and grace and the bible says she was of the city of Tyatria, and she worshiped god when she had us her heart was opened and she attended to us unto the things that were spoken of paul verse 15 the Bible says, and when she was baptized and her household, she besought us saying, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, 
come into my house does that look like an open door she opened the door of opportunity and said come into my house and abide there and she constrained us verse 16 while they stayed with her enjoying the blessings that they had now received a right hand of fellowship in philippi the bible says a time came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by suit saying 17 the same followed paul and us and cried saying these men are servants of the most high god can you imagine the accuracy of our suit saying which show us the way of salvation absolutely nothing wrong about that statement and this did she for many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit i command you in the name of jesus christ to come out of her and he came out the same hour 19 you would call this a display of the power of God. You would call this an opportunity to see Jesus revealed even in Philippi. Now, this was a man who had secured favor with Lydia. And now this was an opportunity to bring fame to the name of Jesus. The Bible says when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas. What a demon could not do. The human beings who are now angry are now about to bring the apostles in trouble. It didn't take more than a minute to speak a word and that demon left the woman. Now trouble is about to come as a result of this opportunity that has been opened. The Bible says they drew them to the marketplace unto the rulers, verse 20, and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Notice the intelligence of these guys. They never said they came and stopped us from making money. Are we together now? They said these guys being Jews, this is the trouble that they brought and they went straight to the judicial system. And they said, listen, we need help from the judicial system to punish these people because they are Jews. They are bringing trouble to our city. Reading to 24. Let's finish up. 21. They said, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Look at the intelligence of these guys. The whole goal was not an advocacy for the purity of the Rome, the Roman people. The goal was an annoyance because certain things were happening to these guys. And now, because the liberty of the spirit was being expressed within that place, there were repercussions to it. The Bible says they teach customs that were not profitable for us to receive being Romans. Verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes. Can you imagine the anger? and commanded to beat them 23 and when they had laid many stripes upon them don't forget that these men who are going through this trouble are anointed men the anointing was demonstrated a few moments ago in the presence of a lady with the spirit of divination and here after that kind of thing you thought the next story would be an interesting crusade or the next thing would be an interesting celebration where they would say finally we have gotten these people how do you reconcile stripes with the manifestation of the supernatural that right after a fantastic miracle only god knows how many people had been defrauded by their divination now the apostles brought liberty and they were about to pay for it they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely verse 24 the bible says who haven't received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks let's stop there for now now you understand what i mean by there are certain battles and certain challenges that you have no business even knowing about their existence except and unless you rise and ascend to certain dimensions listen this already is a message that ministers maturity so that in dealing with people 
you will have the discernment to understand that when God tells you to pray for all men, you have no idea of the existence of the battles, the battles that exist at certain realms and certain strata of life. For as long as you've not gotten a job, you may never understand the possibility of jealousy towards an excelling staff. So when someone is telling you, look, it looks like something happens in, you cannot relate because you are surrounded by too much kindness. And because that level of breakthrough has not come, you've not captured that possibility in your mind. Are we together? There are many people whose innocence today is not because they are free from trouble. They've not risen to the realm that makes that trouble necessary in their life. Are we together now? There are battles in life that only open doors bring. Pay attention. The second thing I want you to know is that the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed, the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed will always react negatively to growth and lifting. Let me take it again. That the nature of the fallen man and the nature of the believer in Christ who has not been transformed will by default react negatively when in the presence of lifting or in the presence of rising. Please pay attention to this. This has nothing to do with being good or bad. That enshrined as a weakness in the nature of the fallen man and then the believer who has not contended for sufficient transformation. There is a tendency that is enshrined within all men as unbelievers and believers who have not been transformed by the spirit. That they will always eventually react negatively if and when in the presence of growth in the, in the presence of excellence. That means knowing this already prepares you to know that your rising will have a repercussion. Are we together now? I have taught you that the highest psychological need of every man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel appreciated, and the need to feel significant. So if an individual, for instance, is stunted at a level and does not seem to make progress and here comes another individual or a group of individuals who are excelling perpetually and in an ever increasing way i'm saying is a natural response in the fallen man to now begin to exhibit elements of envy and jealousy and bitterness it has nothing to do with being good or bad if you're with me say amen, amen. hallelujah you will understand the implication of Jesus' prayer. Jesus is teaching us, pay attention every time your daily bread arrives. Pay attention the moment that mantle lands upon your life. Pay attention the moment the doors begin to open. Pay attention the moment the promotion comes. Pay attention the moment the ministry begins to excel. Because as you are learning now, open doors have implications. Are we together? very very powerful and very important first corinthians 16 and verse 9 nobody else puts it better than the apostle himself apostle paul from his own experience this man who is teaching this had been lashed because of open doors so he's not writing cunningly devised fables are we together he's writing as a product of the things he had seen the things he had heard unfortunately the things even his body had handled he said for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are how many the adversaries are many as the doors a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many adversaries please look up let me tell you this you see most believers because of the way the kingdom is structured if you have the advantage of being raised from a family that is very uh, a family of believers even if morally um, sound alone or you have the opportunity to be shielded early within a church 
or a prophetic covering that shields you from a lot of things chances are excellent that in your learning God and most times we men of God must take responsibility because in mentoring people sometimes we shield them from understanding the reality of the cosmos as it is so there is a mindset that the average believer has that in the face of real life situations they cannot seem to relate with it because now you grew up in a family where everyone is greeting you everyone is saying god bless you even the person you call wicked still prays and fasts and is kind you see that now and so chances are excellent that we think that is the view of life holistically then when we have the opportunity to now step out we begin to see other dimensions to life and men and living that is foreign to our training that's why many believers do not last they excel in church but now when they step into the cosmos they've not been equipped with the intelligence to know how to navigate in light of these realities now you understand what i just said that the nature of the fallen man and the believer who is not transformed will always react negatively to growth and lifting this is very powerful what then does it mean to deliver to deliver means to save to deliver means to rescue to deliver means to set free in the simplest expression to deliver means to save to salvage to deliver means to rescue to deliver means to set free very quickly the bible teaches us that there are three levels of evil three levels of evil we have another series and so we'll take time to deal with that but just for you to have an understanding there are three levels of evil that the bible mandates that believers must contend for deliverance from number one the first level of evil is satan and wicked spirits first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 three levels of evil that were mandated to contend for deliverance from satan and wicked spirits first peter 5 and verse 8 here's what it says it says be sober apostle peter is teaching us now be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour so satan is perpetually seeking whom he may devour are we together now it says be sober be vigilant it never calls the devil your friend it never calls the devil an ally in fact the bible calls him many things including the thief and now your adversary are we together so the first level of evil that we must contend for deliverance from is satan and wicked spirits are you ready for number two the second level of evil that the bible says to contend for deliverance from is wicked and unreasonable men write it down please wicked and unreasonable men second thessalonians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 1 to 3 second thessalonians 3 1 to 3 wicked and unreasonable men finally brethren he says pray for us that the word of the lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you verse 2 it says and that we may be delivered is that in your bible he's saying pray for us we are apostles we are men of god but we still need your prayer that we be delivered not only from satan but that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men why he said for all men have not faith i wish we could look at this from niv or nlt one of the versions will say that all men are not believers he says pray for us nlt now he said pray too that we be rescued from wicked and evil people the apostle is saying scattered across your environment are such people not everyone is like that but there are people like that are we together it says for not everyone is a believer this is a very powerful information that you need to have and understand it should not plant antagonism but is is an information that should create a garrison of defense within your mind that in your environment you will always find this man for not everyone is a believer back to my illustration about the naivety of many Christians because 
the believer is mandated and the atmosphere the kingdom culture demands that the law of love is what prevails among people so many believers haven't been raised by christian families christian homes are largely naive as to the reality of this world the bible says we know that we are of god he says and the whole world lieth in wickedness the whole world not nigeria the whole world not your village the whole world not africa the whole world lieth in wickedness that means if you ever run out of any region in search for safety from satan you made a wrong mistake the key is not a translocation the key is to understand this system are we together now that means if you run from abuja and go to lagos in hope that you are running from satan by the intelligence of scripture that is a futile venture because satan is so energetic he can run to and fro the whole earth now i don't know how many pilots can do that successfully but this guy has mastered the art of movement he is not weak satan is testifying before god about job from whence comest thou and he said from to and fro the earth You should have a healthy, maybe not honor, but an appreciation for the presence of such a determined person. <laughs> a spirit that sustains the zeal to go to and fro the earth. It means the potential or the probability of meeting you is 100%. <laughs> he will find you somewhere. <laughs> Are we together? Amen wicked and unreasonable men he says for not all men have faith have this at the back of your mind ladies and gentlemen that when doors open among the many people you will meet through open doors are wicked and unreasonable men wicked and unreasonable men in genesis that chapter 37 let's look at a few things just to buttress on that i'm discussing three evils that the bible mandates will be delivered from one satan and wicked spirits two now wicked and unreasonable men give us genesis chapter 37 please we'll read from verse 3 to 11 then we'll jump i just want you to watch a story follow very closely now israel jacob now loved joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors next verse it says and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than the brethren notice the progression what was the the reason for the hatred the father's love for him right he had access to the father's heart and the bible says they hated him that was an elementary level and could not speak peaceably unto him so if you were Joseph, you would notice that after a healthy commendation from your father, you would suddenly begin to receive ill treatments and antagonisms from your brothers, wondering, what did I do wrong? Verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, say open doors. And he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Are you seeing it growing now? They started by hating him. And then now a dream is added to that love again. And the reaction, they hated him the more. Verse 6. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Brotherly naivety took him to complicate his matter. He went to share his dream. For behold, verse 7 now. We were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. Hmm. Verse 8. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? And shall thou indeed have dominion over us now? And they hated him yet the more. So we see hatred level one. Then a dream comes the more. Then he shares the dream. Then the more. Are we together? Continue the reading, please, verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren. Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, now pay attention, please. The sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. 
I wish I had time would have discussed what this meant. Verse 10. And he told it even to his father now and to his brethren and even his father now was getting concerned. The father rebuked him and said, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Verse 11. And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the sayings, I'm a prophet. This boy is not just dreaming. Something is happening here that we do not understand. Jump to verse 18. Wicked and unreasonable men. And when they saw him afar off, the father now sent him to come and check the welfare of the brothers. Even before he came near unto them, the Bible says they conspired against him to slay him. Question what did Joseph do that was wrong? He was loved, then he dreamt, then he dreamt again, then he dreamt again. Are we together? So the question you've been asking, what did I do? Here is the answer. You dreamt and you listened to a message and you paid attention and you prayed and you fasted and you rose in the spirit. It was interpreted as an offense in the spirit because it's now listen carefully <clears throat> let's read to 20 18 to 20 when they saw him afar off even before he came near unto them they conspired against him to slay him 19 it says and they said to one another behold this dreamer cometh 20 Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Now, notice that those that were talking were people of the same bloodline. They were his brothers. That is how far you do not know the potential that is in the unregenerate man to fight growth. Most people take for granted the reaction of success in the face of people who are not saved or not transformed. The Bible is teaching you here that you need to be careful. Don't just jump through open doors and be smiling. While you enter open doors, make sure you begin to prepare and fortify yourself with knowledge. I guarantee you, except it is not an open door, there will be adversaries. Hallelujah. Did we finish 20? Let's throw him into the pit. And then we will say some evil beast that devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. The whole battle was about dreams, not the person. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's the mantle that is on you. There are battles that have nothing to do with you. It's a mandate. Listen very carefully. The prophecy that is on you is what is attracting many things you do not know. The only way to abort that battle is to throw away the prophecy. But for as long as it is on you, listen carefully, for as long as it is on you, I guarantee you by the integrity of scripture, there are battles that you will have to learn how to fight. You will have to be like the men of David, trained at the cave of Adullam. You must know how to hold the sword and to fight with valiance until you are able to throw 800 people and still stand with your sword. Otherwise, some doors will become a curse to you. Not even Jesus was spared of this. Out of a family where nobody rises, suddenly the apostolic and the prophetic mantle lands on your life and you start to share dreams and visions and you said it like a joke and it happened you said it like a joke and it happened you said my sister will get a job they laughed and it happened after three days something will start being wrong with your shoes something will start being wrong with your hair why did you come home late and you are wondering what happened there is a reaction from the spirit listen to me if you do not know this life will teach you a lesson that will take many years to learn open doors have implications are we together there are three evils that every man will fight provided doors open one satan himself and evil spirits number two wicked and unreasonable men very quickly number three the flesh
The flesh. Oh, whoever told you that it is only Satan you have to fight. The flesh. Let me tell you something about the flesh. In my opinion, of all these three evils, this is the most vicious of them. Because you can cast evil spirits. You can run away from wicked and unreasonable men. But this flesh you see, it remains with you and the Bible says to crucify it and you will die daily. The flesh. <laughs> Romans 7 from verse 18. For I know that in me, again, our Paul is speaking now, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me he says but how to perform that which is good i find not let's continue it says for the good that i would that i would i do not but the evil which i would not want to do that is what i do verse 8 20 let's continue it says now if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 21. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. 22. For I delight in the law of God sincerely in the inward man. Are you seeing the conflict now? But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. 24. It says, O wretched man that I am, an apostle that casted demons without talking twice, is now expressing frustration. What kind of an enemy is this that you cannot cast out with one word? O wretched man that I am he says who shall deliver me Paul is crying is there someone who can deliver me from this body of death listen the flesh is so vicious in its operation that it reveals itself in levels according to your growth there are many times that the flesh will lie low for many years and you would flatter yourself into thinking you have attained unto liberty without pressing in the spirit. It is simply because certain doors have not been opened. If you are not Solomon the king, you have no business with Bathsheba. Are we together now? Yes. If you are not Samson the warrior, you have no problem with Delilah. No. Are we together now? If you are not Abraham, the one who should be the father of nations, you have no problem with the frustration of barrenness that will lead to the birth of Ishmael. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. As you rise, your flesh has a way of reinventing strategies that is able to attack and challenge you at the level of your growth. There are some temptations that will never come to your life when you are broke. It's not that you are delivered from them. The temptation cannot work because what it feeds on to get to you is not even there. Are we together now? Please listen very carefully. If you have not been given an appointment in an office where there is a cash flow of one billion naira every week, the, you will think that you have immunity against bribery and corruption. And you may even have the audacity to write a book about those who are doing it. This is why the older men become, the more silent they become. Because there is something they learn with time. That this life bar, at the end of it all, it is God. Is someone learning? Now you will understand why Jesus said in your prayer, do not forget to bring this. Deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Why will there be an attack over your car when there is no car there? I'm not being sarcastic now. Are we together now? Yes. There are many believers today who believe that they have attained unto a spiritual state that has magically immune them from certain things. No. The flesh is lying low, quietly, allowing you... Do you know... Now, let me speak a bit of biology. It is said a woman from age 12 or 13 or so has 
the potential to give birth but a woman can stand even at age 40 and her womb is there and you will never see pregnancy because the condition that allows that pregnancy has not yet been engaged is that true as soon as that woman takes in seed immediately you will see that that quiet that that pregnancy that has the potential for it had always been there same thing happens with a man this is how the flesh is there is something the flesh is waiting for to activate it operation and the unemployment issue has helped the flesh to lie quiet so you can believe that i am fine and i am free are we together there is a certain level of increase and influence that if it has not yet come oh jesus for as long as you are still a baby even though you are the word incarnate no problem but as long as the news of your arrival got to herod herod said who did you say go and search the archives for me is there such and such a prophecy he said let me know where that child is so that i will come do you know that because of the arrival of jesus many women lost their children does that look like a savior what kind of a savior whose arrival makes the death of there was a lamentation in rama many people died because a gift that will save the world arrived whoever told you that good things don't create conflict Whoever told you that the arrival of glorious things will not bring contention from hell? Are we together now? Yes. This is a very powerful teaching. Jesus arrives. If you were the woman who lost your child, would you want to see Jesus? And they told you prophetically that this is the Savior. You want to save my life and you killed my child by your arrival. What a Savior. How about Mary? The moment it was announced in the spirit, Hail Mary, that salutation came and he said, you are favored. The next thing that followed her life was trouble and controversy. She was about to lose Joseph. Are we together? And then the scribes and the Pharisees came, just confess, who is the father of this child? A ghost. You must be stupid. You are playing with our intelligence on top of the fact that you have brought shame to your husband and our family. I'm an innocent young virgin. We do not believe that. Ladies and gentlemen, open doors come with challenges. That is the reason why men must be prepared to attain stature in the spirit. There are many doors that it is God that closed by himself because you have been weighed in the spirit and God has seen that if that door is open, the, left, the bankruptcy of spiritual intelligence and stamina, you will die because a door opened. So he will close the door as an act of his mercy and quickly send you to men and women who would midwife your growth until you attain stature in the spirit and then that door will be opened. Are we together? You hear that in a family, the last person who became a pastor got mad after a crusade. You laughed hysterically and say, how can a man finish preaching and then be mad? And now you don't know anything about the dynamics of liberty. You have not learned that much. And then you wanted to go and organize a crusade in the same village. And you find out that the more you pray, the more the crusade is not holding. Don't force it. God is saying, listen, young man, it is true that Christ died, but we rise through light. You do not understand the ancient powers and the altars that have pegged their relevance in that land. You come in like Paul and just believe you dislodge darkness without spiritual intelligence. You will wake up with half of you not waking up. Many, many people have not followed the protocol of the spirit and they've barged into open doors arbitrarily to their pain to their peril there are temptations you have no business going through for instance is it not when you are a big man that you now begin to fight for titles you didn't call me apostle joshua selman do you know who i am if you were a brother in the wilderness somewhere any name they call you even if they say yes you will answer but now that the door has been opened and you are a great man apostle joshua selman it is amazing to know that there is a whole industry that is built around ego because the higher you rise some unnecessary things become necessary so much that an industry was built around it if you are learning say amen, amen. some of you are praying and say god close that door i'm not i don't even want to get <laughs> you must pass through the door in the name of jesus 
Hallelujah. I remember one gentleman who came one time, I don't know if he was here or he was in Zaria, and he just brought a poster. He said he was taking a step of faith. He saw it in a dream. He wanted to go and hold a crusade in a stadium in his place. And I looked at him with compassion. I said, my friend, God doesn't work like this. Huh? Just take it easy. Be faithful in your prayer group where you, and he was determined. I know what I had. I said, okay, God go with you. You see, eh? sometimes it's very good to allow life itself to be able to help it's only that sometimes the casualties become so much even if you survive you may not have the strength again are we together yes battles that come as a result of growth let's tie a few things now so the bible says that the flesh is a big hindrance when doors are open I define flesh as the vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature the vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature the vulnerabilities and the negative tendencies that come with the fallen nature and the Bible says it can be activated it can be activated in the presence of plenty. It can be activated in the presence of abundance. Watch this. Jesus is teaching in a crusade and there are hungry people who are tarried there for three days. And now they were hungry and a responsible father would say, um, let them sit. I'm about to feed them with bread. He got five loaves, two fish, multiplied it and gave it to them. Notice what began to happen. The moment they were getting satisfied, lawlessness came in. For as long as they were hungry, they sat quietly as they shared the bread. The moment they started becoming satisfied, they started throwing remnants of the bread on the ground. And after they left, Jesus quietly said, go around, pack what they have thrown. And they found out they had wasted 12 baskets full. You will not waste bread if you are hungry. But when you eat, you can now begin to waste because there is no need again. For as long as the nation of Israel were in need of a savior and deliverance, they would listen to everything Moses would say. But as soon as they crossed the Red Sea and attained unto a place of liberty, Moses went up to receive the commandments and he returns back to find idol worshippers who had suddenly changed. They had forced Aaron to build a golden calf and they began to bow and worship how short a time was it from their exodus that they had now forgotten that's what happens to men in the presence of abundance give us this day our daily bread then it does not stop there he said now pay attention to what comes along daily bread when you receive daily bread then he says lead us not into temptation temptation always follows daily bread and then he says deliver us from evil hallelujah there are groups and associations you may never know exist until you rise to certain realms in life are we together now you have become a ceo you don't drink you don't smoke, you love God, but you have attained a position of growth and honor where you are invited for an executive meeting. And the nature of that meeting demands global leaders to join you. And there are certain professional practices that may corrupt your conviction, but it is part of the modus operandi of that level of living. The courage it will take to stand and say no will take fasting and prayer for you to be able to administer it because there are implications when you make the people feel stupid because of your faith are we together now yes there are many people who do not understand you get into a system where corruption is systemic it's not about your personal desire you met a design like that and your contribution is only part of the design how do you now fight that overall system you can fight an individual, but fighting systems are very difficult. Are we together now? Yes. You never knew that there was anger and frustration in you until God gave you large membership and you are preaching, people are saying amen, and nobody comes to say, Apostle, God bless you. I'm not saying you should give me money, please. I'm just using it as an example. And everybody just meets you and says, your sermon was powerful while you are trekking back home. Then you realize that that pain is in your heart. 
Remember, you said you don't have any business with the cares of this world. Your wife wakes you and says, is this how we are going to continue? When I married you, I knew what you told me God said. What is this thing we are seeing? That's when you will stand up and know that on a Sunday morning, you don't have a sermon because of anger. Not because you could not prepare. You are beginning to hate the people God sent you to because you don't even know what kind of stiff neck. Now you understand Moses' anger. And you will know why in spite of his anger, God still called him the meekest man. God rates people based on the pressures that are on them and the level of righteousness that oozes out in the midst of that pressure. Are we together? A woman who has eight children and no husband, plus five other relatives that were added to her, and she prays for only 30 minutes a day, and she's faithful in it. You can laugh at her because all your supplies come free. You can lock yourself for three days and come out into supplies that are prepared. And you will find out that God seems to honor that woman because he's rating her based on the realities that are there and her press to love God in spite of what is available. Is someone learning now? This is very, very powerful. There are vulnerabilities that come when we grow. Listen, when you know this, huh, the higher you rise, the more humble you become. I've had the honor and the privilege of relating with the fathers of faith in this nation, and I am amazed at the level of humility and brokenness within them. You would think they were such a weak people, but these people are powerful in the spirit. Something, there is an education that experience in partnership with the spirit has brought to them that they have understood that, listen, it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth, but in truth it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know I found out that many men who become angry fathers, angry mothers were not born like that. Are we together? When you have five children, everything is rising except your salary. School fees is rising. Trouble is rising. Relatives are being added now. Somebody just calls you from nowhere and says, are you not aware we are related? Help me and pay my school fees. I'm not aware. I was never told that I have any cousin from anywhere say so, well just to inform you that I am your cousin I've told you you are our elder brother and since our parents are not there you are the new father we know responsibilities come and you find out that the man begins to get to his wife and children and sometimes the young children say why is daddy changing he will reset back in old age but for that as far as that reality is happening you find out that there are people who become things that they were not let me tell you, it's because the flesh was lying quietly, waiting for opportunities to come up. Are we together now? Yes. Who would have imagined, ladies and gentlemen, that Solomon was a murderer within, I mean, uh, David was a murderer within him. David, if you saw David, the young boy, who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a pastor? Who would not want that kind of gentleman to be a husband? You would have seen David, David epitomized the prayer point of every woman. And yet there was a murderer locked up in that young boy. But the murderer could not manifest. He could only kill animals. But you didn't know he could kill men too. One day when kings went for war, the man was roaming around his palace. And then he saw Vashti. That was the time for flesh to come out. He went so far to write a letter and gave Uriah, go and die. This is by my hand. And you thought that after Uriah died, he would say, okay, that's all right. He's still, I hope you know that's how Solomon came. <laughs> the question is, when you understand this, you now begin to pray the prayer of the psalmist, search my heart, O God and know my thoughts it says and if you find out that there is any wickedness within me lead me to the way everlasting someone shall deliver us from evil hallelujah you never know as a man of god that you like money until god brings a billionaire as a son and he says papa or man of god or apostle what do you want just speak and it will be done and God said, don't say anything. Say, God, God forbid. I've suffered in this life. 
you are the one fighting my own progress now I've preached I've done it now it's my own time to rest you said there remained a rest for the people of God now When you had 100,000 home and abroad, God said, give it. You said, yes, Lord. In one word, you gave it. Now you have 10, 20 million and God said, give everything. You know, I, I'm, I, I know how God speaks. God cannot be this, this wicked. Knowing the reality of Nigeria to ask me, no, it can't be God. I reject that spirit. Satan appears as an angel of light. I reject that light. And when you finish, because God speaks once, you will hear twice. <laughs> God will use every verification system you want. I am the one saying it. May you be delivered. Amen. Now, very quickly, so that we can pray. There is a biblical requirement for accessing deliverance from God. If it is... God you seek deliverance from there is a condition that all men are mandated to assume there is a posture that you must attain unto in the spirit in order to access deliverance from God and that posture is humility and submission please write it down deliverance in the kingdom and in the spirit is only for men and women who understand the power of humility and understand the power of of submission you must come to a point where you acknowledge the reality of your human limitation outside of the help and the mercies of God it is called brokenness in one word first Peter chapter 5 please from verse 6 and 7 first Peter 5 6 and 7 please write it and look up the Bible says humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season uh-huh casting all your cares upon him because he cared for you are we together do you have that down James 4 7 James 4 7 submit yourself therefore to God submit yourself to God then he says resist the devil don't come and resist the devil when you are not submitted to God. It says resist the devil and he will flee. Your submission first. Your humility first. You want to access deliverance? You must come to a point where you admit and acknowledge that outside of the help of the mighty God, I do not even know the tendencies that are enshrined in my own heart. And you must be able to, uh, to admit it unashamedly that except God helps me, vain is the help of man including my own self is someone learning now this is very powerful many people want to experience that deliverance from god but they are yet to come to a recognition that they are insufficient in themselves here's how the bible puts it it says not that we are sufficient of ourselves he says our sufficiency is of god what is sufficiency the ability to always rise to the occasion the ability to be without disappointment you always are able to rise to the occasion He's saying when you see that we are always full of capacity, it is not as though we attained it by our own power. We have outsourced a technology through our brokenness where we draw strength from God. Humility and submission. Listen to me. You want to experience the reality of that scripture to be delivered from evil? I can tell you that humility and submission to the governing authority of the Christ is a fundamental requirement if you will experience perpetual deliverance. Are we together? The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, not a man, the righteous run it to it. You first have to admit that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that until you run to it, you are not saved. We live in a world where it's marketable to be proud, it's marketable to sound self-sufficient, as though outside of the assistance of the Christ, we are able to make it on our own and by ourselves. Even Jesus Christ said, I can of my own do nothing. Is that in your Bible? 
I can he declared his vulnerability without fear and without shame now please write this down deliverance from God is based on a response system we're going to pray now deliverance obtaining deliverance from God is based on a response system that means deliverance does not just come except it is a response number one deliverance comes as a response to a cry for mercy please write it down deliverance comes to the saints from God as a response to a cry for mercy I said deliverance from God is based on a response system every time you see deliverance in the earth it came as a response something there was a reaction from the earth and then God responded to it a response to a cry for mercy Lamentations 3 22 Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. It says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Because his compassions fail not. A response to a cry for mercy. There is something that always happens to the believer who knows how to cry to God for mercy. In Luke chapter 18 from verse 35. Luke chapter 18, please, from verse 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass, the story of blind Bartimeo, that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat at the wayside begging. 36 now. And hearing the multitudes pass by, he asked what it meant. Next verse. The Bible says, And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by, uh -huh, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. This is very powerful. Next verse. And the Bible says, And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. God will always respond to the cry of mercy. Next verse. Reading to 43. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come, he asked him, uh -huh, saying, What will thou that I do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Two more verses. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Verse 3, Immediately he received his sight. Did you know that Jesus would have just passed and left that person like that? And his condition would have looked like it was the will of God for him to be left there. But he understood that in the economy of God, there is daily bread for everyone. And that you can place a demand even through the cry of mercy. Thou son of David, he said, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Paul was teaching us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. He says that we may obtain mercy. You don't obtain mercy where you are. You must take the step to come boldly to the throne of grace by faith. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Deliverance from God comes to the believer as a response to a cry for mercy. Hmm. Cry for mercy. Thou son of David, have mercy upon my family. Have mercy upon my health. Have mercy upon my job. We have taught for a long time in the body of Christ that mercy is for sinners. So most people do not understand the potential of mercy because they don't want to make it look like they are sinners. What are you saying mercy for? Have you done something wrong? Mercy is a mystery in the kingdom. He said above the mercy seat, below the, below the mess above the mercy seat below the cherubims there I will meet with you God meets men at the point of mercy most of us do not understand the power of God's mercy if you can please do listen to my teachings on mercy I have taught extensively about mercy the Bible tells us of the prodigal son that this gentleman began to deteriorate and deplete until he who was once royalty with his father had now been reduced to feed with swine. 
Here's what he said. The Bible says he came to himself and he said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto you, Father, I have sinned against you. You see brokenness there? And against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. Then the Bible says he got up and then he started going. Notice he never met the father at home. Because once you take the step, God will always meet you at the point of your obedience. It was as though the father was waiting for him to take that step and then he met him there are many people today who have experienced mighty deliverance from God ten people can be in the same situation financially ministerially and a few of them will come out as if the devil does not exist because somewhere in that equation someone knew how to cry for mercy Lord if you I know that I do not understand financial principles to fund this ministry with integrity but I cry that you are the God of heaven and because your mercies are new every morning show me mercy and that person Person who may not even know the dynamics of financial prosperity someone can just call him and say God said I should give you a billion and you match the person with the results and they don't add up because mercy has spoken may someone be a beneficiary of the mercy of God in the name of Jesus Christ mercy a response to the cry for mercy when I go to God in prayer, praying for myself and this ministry, I've told you, I don't go to God like a man of God coming to meet a colleague in ministry. I go to him expressing, not out of a standpoint of condemnation, but the depth of my ignorance. Lord, I do not know so many things. You have granted me the grace to come this far. I pray that your mercy will be and remain at the corridors of my destiny. Because outside of your mercy, this world is vicious. Outside of the mercy of God, it takes mercy before favor arrives. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. So the time for favor, the first thing you look for is mercy first before the favor. Are we together? Yes. The mercy of God. There are many easy things that have become hard because we are still standing by our own strength. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. With all your heart, it says, and lean not unto your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 is a warning to men. Be not wise in your own eyes, it says, but fear the Lord. And depart from evil father it is by your mercy I'll be able to raise this child not I know I will raise my child God forbid that my child becomes an armed robber you know how many sincere serious missionaries who invested in raising other people when it got to their own children everything you know to mentor a child properly they did and the child still became an armed robber how do you explain Judas being mentored by Jesus how do you explain Satan as Jesus's creation becoming Satan are we together now you would think an excellent God should be so flawless in his creation and his all-knowing ability should have pre-informed him that somewhere along the economy of his creation there could be a possibility he would have programmed that in creating them yet a third of the angels fell and he still remains God yet Satan his creation has become the arch enemy of his program and his purposes today Judas, the one who was responsible for the bag, lost three things I've taught you. He lost the money, he lost his place, his bishopric, and he lost his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that it is by the mercy of God that we thrive and excel. You are in ministry here, you are in business. I want you to know that you must perpetually walk in the consciousness that all we are and all that we have is by and large a product of God's mercy. Hallelujah.
I told you about a gentleman years ago. This guy fasted. That's the longest I've seen that I know. He fasted for 400 days, six to six. 400 days. I wrapped up the last day with him. And after that guy wrapped it up, he started suffering. And now you are wondering, I'm looking at my life and say, ah, if it is by the investment of spiritual things, some of us should not be where we are. But Lord, for your mercy. You see, the awareness of God, the administration of God's mercy is what brings thanksgiving, genuine thanksgiving. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? There are many of us, based on the kind of training you gave your children, your children should almost be, respectfully speaking, they should not attain onto the level they now have. But the mercy of God caused that when your children left you, God brought prophets and apostles to cover them. They served as midwives so that the adults you now have are not the children. The trajectory of your training should not produce those kind of champions. But the mercy of God, the mercy of God. Some of you, you saw idols eat up your family members and it's not like you were more spiritual. One of the ones that died was even a pastor while you were an unbeliever. But God meandered you through a crusade and here you are today standing. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be Mephibosheth, when you get to the palace, do not forget that you were that crippled young man at Lodebar. It took the mercy of God for David to bring you. So do not laugh at Ziba. Ziba had 15 sons and not one of them was favored. They were made to walk and serve Mephibosheth. He was a product of a wrong midwife. A midwife made a mistake at his birth and crippled him. He would have remained like that, but God showed him mercy. Mephibosheth, when they bring you to the palace, I know you can act pious, but when you stay a few weeks in the palace, do not allow the memory of where you came from to be so eroded that you lose touch. That was the mistake of Vashti. She forgot that the only reason why she was queen was that she married a king. Not because she was a warrior over 127 provinces. She only married a great man. That's what made her a great woman. And she now created a camp and an empire for herself outside of the influence of the king. And she lost her place. Esther was about to make the same mistake when Mordecai said, don't make that mistake. Haman is about to annihilate the Jews. And don't you sit there and act, don't act, you were a village girl in Shushan. Don't forget the purpose for your attaining that glory. Hear me, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when doors open, be ever conscious of the mercy of God. Do not allow the beauty of the palace to make you look down on others and forget that it was mercy that took you there. Man of God, do not celebrate your ministry and go around sarcastic and being sarcastic and insult people. Shame on this one, small church. Oh, you have forgotten that it takes many years for a building to rise, but in minutes that building can crumble. Listen carefully. You have now become a multi-millionaire. You have now become a billionaire. And you look at everybody and they are like pieces of rag. I'm reminding you that if you want to experience deliverance, you must know how to call for mercy and live in the atmosphere of mercy. My life today is a product of God's mercy. Look at me. This is all of me. There are some things that cannot be done by men except God assists a man. 
Nicodemus came to Jesus in John 3 by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. There are some results men cannot produce, ladies and gentlemen. And in the presence of this plenty, the tendency is that we want to savour the glory and make it look as, it, as though it came as a product of our intelligence. For as long as I am breathing, I will let the world know. It is true that he has helped us to pay our price in various places. But I tell you, it will be foolish of me to stand here and beat my chest to tell you everything you see is a reflection of intelligence. No. I'm the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy i'm the one say the one you have shown mercy you have shown me mercy you have shown me mercy i'm the one Listen, years ago I went somewhere and I went to preach for a man of God and when I was done preaching, I was headed to his office and I saw a gentleman who was working as part of the protocol. He looked at me and I looked at him and I was in shock. Many years ago on campus, that guy used to be a very strong person, very vibrant and powerful. If you saw that gentleman, you would think you would explode in a global ministry within two years. And here was this, my dear brother, didn't seem like the best of states, seemed like someone who had been beaten by life and frustrated. I was almost tempted to say what happened. Then I remembered. Man, these guys were vibrant. When I say, you know what it means? Campus vibrancy is... is is with the infancy of spiritual work so you put your energy to it you look beyond me oh and poured your love you look beyond me oh sing i'm the one say i'm the one me thank God for these great people that God has blessed me with but I remember the crowd that was in Jesus's ministry they were the same people who said crucify him so the larger they are the more the voices that can say crucify you you will need to cry for mercy cry for mercy and say Lord not by our righteousness but it is by your grace the, the, the deliverance power of God comes in response to a cry for mercy apostle right now i do not even know i am a man of god but my family members have not eaten things have gone haywire in my life what you need is a cry for mercy you can cry the mercy of god to come and become a bailout system in your life i can tell you this number two let's hurry up because i want us to pray Deliverance from God comes as a response to heartfelt prayer. Number one is a cry for mercy. Number two, heartfelt prayer. Deliverance from God comes in response to heartfelt prayer. Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus is speaking to Peter and the disciples. 26, 41. He says, watch and pray. We have a teaching on this later on because these two words capture a very deep mystery for surviving the evil of the times. He said, watch and pray. Watch is the product of intelligence and discernment. He says, when it has to do with your safety, there is a place for intelligence and discernment. Watch, be discerning, be vigilant. And then from the information you get from watching, you pray. 
you don't pray amiss when you watch you watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation he says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak first peter chapter 5 we read it earlier now let's do 8 and 9 first peter 5 8 and 9 be sober and vigilant he says because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour verse 9 it says whom resist steadfastly in faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world in other words this is not new so there is a way of escape you can resist him in the place of prayer philippians chapter 1 and verse 19 very powerful scripture it says for i know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ anything will turn to my salvation through your prayer anything at all the challenges that now befall you as a result of open doors they can be turned to your salvation like it happened at the prison what was supposed to be a limitation to the apostles are we together now yes paul and silas bound as a result of evangelism as a result of promoting the purposes of god the bible says when they were tied there eventually the jailer and all his family became saved i know that this shall turn to my salvation i don't know who i'm speaking to but what looks like a a dead end you are saying lord the troubles that came to my life was because i got this job i want to speak to you that in the place of prayer there is a technology that converts pain to glory if you know how to manage pain I don't watch a lot of TV but there are times I watch Food Network and sometimes there are competitions that they have and they give them food that has stayed overnight and they are expected to do something with that food and still produce a nice meal are we together so they could give them maybe bread food that has stayed and it is they now start thinking of various ways and they can turn it you would think it was freshly prepared food that's how it is something that looks like a dead end programmed by satan even the falling of the pit with prayer can become your advancement into egypt even potiphar's wife's trouble that led you to the prison can become the final bouncing point before you get to the palace for i know that this shall turn for my salvation every time you are afflicted according to james 5 and verse 13 it says is anyone afflicted let him pray i can tell you when you pray with understanding it sustains the ability to produce tremendous power in fact the bible says in mark now mark um what was the scripture verse 24 mark 11 24 it says what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray there is a relationship between desire prayer receiving and having desire prayer receiving and having i've told you that you can only have what you have received if you have not received it you cannot have it receiving is a spiritual technology and then you have it as a manifestation God is able to respond to men who travel in the place of prayer you can access deliverance in the place of prayer listen to me ladies and gentlemen I can tell you that you can pray your way out of many troubles you can pray your way out of many troubles the moment you begin to discern that the spiritual climate is unfavorable maybe your job maybe your business maybe ministry all kinds of things are happening your your husband is sick your child is sick finance going down you see the signature of satan is discernible the bible says the thief cometh not john 10 10 but for to kill to steal and to destroy you can see his signature immediately the word of God is the principal tool for discernment you can see immediately this is Satan this is Satan and you begin to pray 
he gave us a prayer language as an advantage so that we do not walk with the limitations of the mind the mind can catch up later on but you can begin to engage in prayer strategic prayer it says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much Luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 he says to pray without ceasing be consistent in your prayer hallelujah the moment doors open that is not the time for your prayer life to go down that is not the time of laxity do not get caught up with the delicacy of the palace that you forget to pray. Let me tell you how to command deliverance. Esther is in a dilemma right now because she needs to meet King Ahasuerus. And the ethics of kings those days were that if you, if you stepped into the king's inner chamber without his invitation and he did not leave the golden censer, you were dead immediately. And he said, Mordecai, I will go. If I perish, I perish. But now is the time to engage. All of us will be on prayer, even with fasting. We know what prayer can do. I will go to meet the king. And she stepped in to meet the king. And the king said, come. He lifted the golden censer. And that became the beginning of the process that will later become the destruction of Mordecai, of Haman. The lifting of Mordecai and the salvation of God's people. Prayer is powerful. Can I tell you, don't fold your arms and act like nothing is happening when darkness seems to loom around your life. There are seasons in your life where you need dedicated time. You should be prayerful all the time. But let me tell you, there are moments in life and destiny, Kairos moments. I have taught you this. When seasons are about to change, there are many things that start happening to you. One is an unusual desire to give number two is an unusual desire to pray these are indices that show you that you are finishing a season and you are entering a new one when Jesus was about to go to the cross from the communion table he went straight to Gethsemane and the Bible says he prayed repeating the same words drew strength from there and he says I'm ready Judas came with all the people and came and kissed him and he was able to build the stamina to survive until he gave up his life on the cross can i tell you if you turn aside in the day of battle the spiritual diagnosis is that your strength is small not because victory is not possible you need capacity in the spirit i pray that god will raise ceos that pray i pray that god will raise preachers that pray pray for me pray for me is the plague of weak people yes there is a place for intercession but let me tell you everybody who is rising must master the mysteries of the altar you must know how to hold on to the horns of the altar until you command perpetual victory there are certain burdens of leadership that come upon you if you do not know how to flog out the destinies of people in the place of prayer you will raise a weak and a defeated people Prayer is powerful. You lock up yourself. What is happening? In this ministry, it looks like doors of favor is closing. It looks like all kinds of things. We discern the signature of darkness. Father, we call upon you. You are the deliverer. As a family, you find out that you're rising, you're excelling. God is distinguishing you among your, your other people within the bloodline perhaps. And it looks like it's coming with corresponding consequences. Now you have intelligence to know that it is nothing unusual. It is part of the battles that come with growth. It is the implication of open doors. There are giants on every mountain. Don't desire the mountain without holding the tools to fight the giant. Be like Caleb. He said, let us go up at once. We are well able. Hallelujah. You must know that deliverance comes in response to prayer. I can tell you, you can pray negative seasons out of your life. You can pray unfavorable seasons out of your life. There are times you take God seriously and take your destiny seriously and engage in the place of prayer until your light breaks. Are we together? 
prayer does many things it supplies the fire that exposes evil there are times you are even confused you do not even know what is happening prayer in partnership with the word is what begins to filter the happenings beyond the realm of the sight to dig deep into the spirit and know what is really happening because you see judging by the flesh you are going to misjudge so many things prayer filters your perceptions until that which is true is what stands there was a viper hiding in the midst of the wood but for as long as there was no fire the viper was comfortable the moment the wood was lit the viper was exposed people of God the greater you rise let any other thing you can outsource any other thing but not your prayer life outsource those who come to wash your cars outsource those who come to clean your house because you are busy outsource a secretary outsource any other person but in addition to the people who intercede for you you must independently understand that there is something about heaven's response to your voice to your voice to your voice to your voice there is no end time ministry that will stand without a proper consistent ever growing investment in the place of prayer there is no business that will stand i told you this you cannot be the same person leading the field expanding in your business and you believe that satan will fold his arms have you forgotten in the bible where a few people bound themselves with fasting and said they will not eat until paul died men can go that far for your downfall just because you are not wicked does not mean other people are not wicked not all men have faith ladies and gentlemen someone can sit down and say we see the children in this family rising let's see who else rises the little work that i've done for the lord in the ministry has shown me many possibilities that i probably would not have believed existed as far as the administration of evil through the hearts of men is concerned ladies and gentlemen please make sure you are people who understand the dynamics of the altar my goal is to help you and support you with knowledge and to guide you but you must pray you must pray you must pray we live in times where you must understand the place of prayer don't say i am weak start from where you are number three deliverance from God is based on a response to praise deliverance from God is based on number one a cry for mercy number two is based on heartfelt prayer number three deliverance from God to the saints is based on a response to praise Psalm 18 verse 1 to 3 Psalm 18 verse 1 to 3 I will love thee O Lord my strength verse 2 it says the Lord is my rock and my fortress he calls him my deliverer my God my strength in whom I will trust my buckler the horn of my salvation and my high tower let's read verse 3 together ready one to read I will call upon the Lord he says who is worthy to be praised by that formula hold on by that formula of calling upon the Lord and adding it with praise shall I be saved from my enemy he was revealing a formula that I will call upon the Lord who is deserving of praise so by prayer and praise shall I be saved from my enemy if you are Paul and Silas and you find yourself in the prison it is prayer Exodus chapter 15 verse 1 please give it to us let's hurry up they sang Moses and the children of Israel then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord watch the song that they sang this was after deliverance watch this now they had just been delivered from the Red Sea I will sing unto the Lord he says for he had triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Verse 2. 
he says the Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation he is my God I will prepare him a habitation my father's God and I will exalt him verse 3 the Lord is a man of war the Lord is his name these are people singing singing the presence of God verse 4 we're reading to 11 he said Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts had he cast into the sea his chosen captains also are drowned in the sea verse 5 the depths have covered them they sank into the bottom of a stone 6 thy right hand O God is become glorious in power I hope you know this is a song thy right hand O God had dashed in pieces the enemy and in the greatness of thy excellency hast thou overthrown them that rose up against thee thou settest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble eight and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood up right in a heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea nine the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my loss shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them verse 10 it says thou didst blow with thy wind the sea covered them they sank as leads in the mighty waters who is like unto thee O god among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness read the remaining part fearful in praises as a result doing wonders god is fearful in praises and the moment he arises as that warrior the next thing you see are his wonders who is like unto thee O god among the gods it says glorious in holiness fearful in praises listen carefully ladies and gentlemen i can tell you by the power of the holy spirit and i can tell you from the integrity of scripture and experience praise is a deep mystery that is able to overturn possibilities and grant the be insist that the believer stands at the point of victory these are the forces of the spirit that help and guide men now let's finish the scripture that we left up in acts chapter 16. we read down to 24. now let's start 25. at this point paul and silas are in prison then the bible says at midnight paul and silas prayed is that in your bible and they sang praises unto god it was so loud the prisoners heard them watch the god of heaven now suddenly Shibaka so prandiki payata. Ah, this is someone's testimony. Suddenly, it says there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Read on 27. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled 28 but paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm we are all here 29 then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before paul and silas here it is he brought them out and said silas what must i do to be saved anything can turn for your salvation when you know how to engage the mercy of god you know how to engage prayer and you know how to engage praise 31 it says they said unto him believe on the lord jesus and thou shalt be saved and thy house and they spake unto him the word of the lord and to all that were in his house reading to 34 and it took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes this was the jailer and was baptized and he and all his straight away the last verse and when he had brought them into his house he said meet before them and rejoiced believing in god with all his house for we know that all things work together not for everybody to them that love the Lord and to those who are the called according to his purposes. 
So Jesus is teaching the disciples prophetically, not just theologically. He's teaching them because their lives and their faith adventures will be plagued with many, many challenges that come with open doors. And he said in your prayer, the moment daily bread begins to come, the moment doors and dimensions both in the spirit and in life start getting opened, you must master the art of mercy. You must master prayer. You must master praise. These mysteries you must use to surround yourself with like chariots perpetually. You are one who walks in consciousness of God's mercy. You are one who walks in consciousness of the ministry of prayer that you can lock your office as a CEO and dedicate 30 minutes and you are praying. And there is a board meeting that is coming with all kinds of people coming from across the globe. You would think all that you would need is brain work. Some of the people coming for that meetings are coming with their charms and mediums like Rachel. Remember when Rachel was leaving the house of Laban, she took the gods of her fathers with her. Just because you see people wearing suit or dressing nice, the, all their gods, their, their fraternities with dark powers, negotiating the destinies of men upon the table of greatness. You cannot go there being casual. Hear me. Many of you, God wants to lift you. You are trusting God to become a kingdom financier. Have you heard about the king of Tyre? The one who sits upon the mountain of commerce of the earth. You cannot come and transact business except you sell your soul. He did that to Jesus. There is a level of wealth you cannot attain unto just by buying and selling. Believe me, if you are in this kingdom, the person speaking to you is not in ignorance. By the grace of God, I know a bit about finances. I can tell you, there are certain heights in the spirit. It is not buying and selling that takes you there. There is a covenant transaction between men and spirits. Do you believe that? <laughs> Please believe. Oh. If you suddenly return a billionaire tomorrow, people will not say, what did you do? They will say, where did you go to? This kind of result is not about what you have done again where you you must have gone somewhere and they are right a man goes to bed and sleeps in the night and has a dream in that dream he receives an impartation of an understanding heart and then he's also given access to wealth like no other person and then he wakes up and his fame spreads abroad resources start coming remember it will come through men but it is still controlled from the realm of the spirit when job lost everything that he had job lost everything but he did not lose his relationship with god and his ability to sustain to capture the mysteries of the spirit in job chapter 42 and verse 10 the bible says god turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends and the bible says the lord gave job twice as much as he had i'm interested in knowing how that twice came the bible is not silent about it 11 it tells us what happened that there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before it meant something drove them away from him now they came and did eat bread with him and in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the lord had brought upon him here's the secret and every man gave him a piece of money and an earring of gold all blessings come from god through men to men that's how he got twice everything he lost abraham who was broke how did god prosper him he went to egypt and then Abimelech was going to take his wife and God warned him and said, if you touch that man's wife, you're already dead. And Abimelech said, sorry, I will not only leave your wife, I will give you gold and all kinds of things. And he left with it. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, your possibilities in this kingdom are based on the mysteries that you know and you can handle in the spirit. Dominion and stature is, is possible when you stand upon this mystery. These things are not cunningly devised fables. They are the mysteries that men transact with in the spirit and it produces the possibilities that we enjoy in the earth realm. Hallelujah. Jesus said, deliver us from evil. The doors of persecution, 
will open as the doors of increase come to the doors of witchcraft manipulation and attacks will come a day will come where you don't need to ask if anybody has taken your name to a shrine what you'll be asking is how many not has it gone there there is a level in the spirit where while you are calling upon the name of the Lord there are people who will be praying perpetually there are realms where Satan does not want you to backslide. He wants you to die. Because even in your backsliding state, you are still dangerous. He wants you to die. Are we together now? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. What you have learned and you are learning are irrefutable secrets of the kingdom that guarantee your rising. But if I did not teach you what you learned today, many of you will be surprised that God will call you dear Mary thou favored one and the next thing here comes the scribes and the Pharisees asking you questions and saying this vision that came without the assistance of a man you need to explain it how did that pregnancy happen without the natural process of conception they will say how did you become a millionaire without cutting corners are you sure are you really sure The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 10 and 11 to the intent he says that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places all of the things when you read from 3 Ephesians 3 and verse 3 Paul began to speak how that by revelation it was made known unto him the mystery as he wrote in few words verse 4 reading to 5 it says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in ages past it says were not known to the sons of men but had now be revealed to his holy apostles and prophets even by the spirit go to verse 9 he now says that this grace was given to him to make all men and see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things in Christ to the intent now verse 8 that is why God grants access to revelations so that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God the manifold wisdom of God Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day access to the doors of destiny that needs to be opened. Give us this day access to superior levels of influence across the cosmos. Give us this day access to levels of the anointing superior end time mantles. But Lord, as you grant us access to this day, we pray that you lead us not into temptation and then please help them deliver he says deliver us from the evil that comes with growth deliver us from the evil that comes with speed deliver us Elijah you have been sent as a Tishbite to speak over Israel but beware your rising is also the rising of Jezebel she will look for you. The battle was over two people. I have the king in partnership with that she goddess encapsulated in a woman called Jezebel. Jezebel was not a woman. She was a spiritual system of rebellion. It's an extension of the antichrist system. That is why it's a spirit that only tries when it is connected to government. That's why she stayed with Ahab. The same spirit manifested through Herodias when Herod came because John the Baptist now resurfaced in the spirit of Elijah. Listen to me. If you are Elijah, expect Jezebel she's watching you don't you think you would just stand and prophesy the prophets of Baal are the easy part of the deal but that she goddess is vicious Elijah ran away from her a man that called fire to consume others are we together I told you with the arrival of mantles destinies there are many, many, many attacks. Ah, I just said mantles and I just saw fire. This is what I saw in the spirit. As I said mantles, I just saw 
fire. Mantles, 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 mantles. Because there are doors that God is opening. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. There are dimensions that have not yet been made access, accessible to anyone in your family. Now you are coming from behind like Joseph. Not the first, but the chosen. Not the first, but the chosen. And those doors are about, you have mastered the art of saying Ephata for the doors to open. You have to understand how to now hold the sword. Because let me tell you the truth. Warriors do not just speak, warriors fight. Warriors do not just speak, they fight. They are men and women who must know how to hold the sword of the spirit and fight with valiance. You can't turn back. Your turning back will be the destruction of a generation. It's a sin then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And it says to run with perseverance. There is no going back, not for the warrior. You master the art of using the sword and you fight with valiance. Say, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. And he begins to describe a people so vicious. He said, before them is as a garden of Eden. Behind them a desolate wilderness. These are men that can fight. I have fought a good fight, he says. Hear me, whether you are in ministry or you are in business, provided doors are open, don't just wear suit, carry the armory of a warrior as you enter through those doors. A time will come you will need to remove a CEO regalia and put on the garment of a warrior. There are giants on every mountain. Be like Caleb, stand tall. Oh David, do not let Goliath scare you. You can take him down, not by the sling, but by the covenant that you stand upon. He said, you come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of the armies of Israel, in whom you have defiled. Listen. We're about to pray, but ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The prayer deliver us from evil. Some of you, the doors that are opening right now, you came to church with questions about the happenings in your life. What is suddenly happening to my health? The moment they made me a CEO, they said I have high blood pressure. Where is it coming from? Welcome! as you encounter the giants that sit on those mountains. It is not for you to start discussing. Warriors don't discuss, they fight. Take up your arsenals. The work God has given you will not just keep rising like that and then the devil folds his arms. He will come as many things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, there was a gentleman who was going to get an appointment. I think he was in, in an oil and gas company. This guy had labored and worked hard. Everybody in the family had struggled financially and in destiny. They were sincere people. And then this guy kept engaging this mistress. Finally, a job that was going to come and open a door to wipe the tears of people. Do you know what happened? This guy slept and suddenly started having all kinds of funny dreams. This was according to him. And then they would, they, he was supposed to bring a report of medicals. And there were specific hospitals they were to go to. From nowhere, this guy was diagnosed with something that was going to make him lose that job. I remember very clearly, 
he reached me and said, I've never been like this. I, this, this was my genotype. This is my blood group. This is this. Where did this one come from? And I told him, I said, my friend, let me tell you, if you are interested in that job, you need to know that Satan has determined a threat that in your rising is the rising of many. Instead of fighting everybody, he should fight you. Hear me. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There are men that are equal to nations. Instead of Satan fighting nations, he will focus on fighting them. If he can fight the mantle upon your life, that will be equivalent to fighting a million people across the globe. If he can fight your ministry, it is cheaper than fighting all who will rise from you. If he can fight your business, he is by extension fighting all those who look up to you for direction and inspiration. It's time to fight the fight of faith. I told that gentleman, I said, I will pray for you. The devil is a liar. Don't believe that nonsense. Here is an opportunity for your rising to help wipe the tears of your family. Hallelujah. There are many of you here who are victims of the realities of foundations and God wants to lift your family not just you oh Joseph the attack is not on you the attack is on the deliverer who will save Egypt Israel it is not about you Joseph one day you will become the second in command you will have access to preserving the destiny of a nation Moses it is not about you Satan is too serious to fight individuals he fights dreams he fights prophetic programs he fights mantles oh prophet hear me the battle you are going through has nothing to do with you it is a mantle that you are carrying an apostolic and a prophetic mantle Satan was there when prophecy was spoken over you Satan was there when declarations were made. He was not angels alone. He was there. He had the declarations. Listen. Did you ever ask why Satan kept moving through the scribes and the Pharisees to ask Jesus who he was? They met John the Baptist and said, are you that one? what was satan looking for he didn't say why are you here there there was a person they were looking for and john kept confusing them who are you i am the voice of one crying in the wilderness saying repent make straight his ways and then jesus comes you know why satan killed john because he knew the jesus and he did not say it when jesus was finally ordained and commissioned he ensured that like Jezebel wanted the head of Elijah, the head of John the Baptist went for it. I shared with you my visions. Years ago, I was praying one night and then the roof, the ceiling of my room just disappeared. And I'm seeing this creature that is standing before me, a giant creature looking like a dinosaur, having a tail that had its own life that could be disconnected from the creature and still be alive. Bulgy eyes. One eye was looking like the head of a man and he was looking with fierce anger and spoke fluently. So you think you can bring God's people into abundance. I have met demons. I have met spirits it is not only angels I have met I have met demons I have met spirits I can tell you one thing with the devil he's determined when he finds out that there is prophecy on your life when he finds out that you're opening the door is the rising of many get ready the king of Tyre he will wait for you Elijah there are bands of prophets waiting to come and frustrate you 
but thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph thanks be to God hear me the secret now is in Job 38 and verse 33 it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth do you know the principles by which the mysteries by which the heaven regulates itself and can you reproduce that reality in the earth this is what Jesus meant when he said your kingdom come and your will be done capture the principles the modus operandi of the spirit and reproduce it within your life within your sphere and you truly will begin to walk like a God upon the earth Psalm 82 and verse 5 he says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says I have said ye are God and all of you not some are children of the most high the next verse says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes I made up my mind that as far as it depends on me as far as it depends on me I will not only force those doors to open that everyone behind me it says I and the children that the Lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders you are not the only one who came from a bad background find out where Jesus came from Nathaniel said can anything good come out of Nazareth and Jesus did not say you are lying because the most popular Nazarene that they knew died in a very painful way the man called Samson that there was a spirit that followed great Nazarenes even though they were people who had a covenant with God and would just destroy them at the prime of their life Nathaniel said don't waste your time following Jesus there is something in his foundation his success will not last and Jesus sees such a man and says an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile in other words from the sincerity of his heart what he's saying is true I know it is true that people who come from where you are from never rise beyond a certain threshold it is true until your access to the mysteries of the kingdom rewrites that script I know it is true that certain people never attain onto a level of wealth and abundance with a kingdom mindset it looks like the only way you live is by begging all the days of your life anointed but you are a beggar and so the spirit wants but you can arise and rewrite certain things rewrite certain things rewrite certain things every decree can change let me tell you the truth every decree can change even when Haman died the king had already stamped a decree that permitted the death of the Jews so the, the enemy had gone but the system was still going to cause their defeat and Esther came and told the king you are a king you are the one who wrote the first one you can write another decree again we change decrees by writing another decree who wrote the decree that you will not rise I am also a king and a priest unto my God and I can take the advantage of that king priest dimension in partnership with the spirit and right that from this moment henceforth everybody rises that from this moment henceforth everybody rises that from this moment henceforth God is glorified in everybody connected to me where the word of a king is the Bible says there is power hear me if the power from your royalty does not speak it means that your scepter of honor and authority has not been given to you or the consecration that ordains you as a king is not there or you have refused to use your authority to declare but hear me oh David when the oil comes and the scepter comes and the crown comes you are king 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 kings declare by speaking kings rewrite things he said my heart is indicting a good matter yeah I speak of excellent things that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer I can rewrite possibilities in my life and in the lives of others 
Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Shabala Sodavana Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Feel this place you are in the next one minute i like you to begin to pray seriously in the spirit go ahead and begin to generate energy in your spirit man in the name of Jesus, overcome us by the blood of the Lamb. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. The evil that comes when doors open, the evil that comes when mantles come, the evil that comes when increase comes. Shada barakata braskata belekatos. Someone pray. Shada belegate belade balada bosh. Kapra kate belegate paska da brande gate berekos katiata. Krafa kata balakata praska da belekata. Rakata banda praska da belegate praska da belekato shatariata. Enkre kate berekate berekos koto balakato shatariata. Hallelujah. Just two prayer points and we're done for tonight. I'd like you to begin to invoke the mercy of God across every aspect of your life that it seems the devil is taking advantage of. Oh, by the mercy of God, the Lord rebuke you. I call for the mercy of God. Someone go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Invoke the mercy of God. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, 
I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. Ah. Rise. Yes, I bleed the blood, I bleed the blood, I bleed the blood. I bleed the blood, I bleed the blood, the precious blood. I bleed the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I know. and declare Satan the Lord rebuke you I come by the authority of the king and priest in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord rebuke you I invoke the power of Elohim I rebuke you over my life over my health someone pray the Lord Covenant of the God of David fights you in the name of Jesus. I call upon the holder of the key of David that opens a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open. He has opened the door. No man can shut it. Go ahead and declare. He has opened the door. No man can shut it. Speak over your ministry. Speak over your family. Satan, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. The Lord is against you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is against you. gentlemen please hear me please hear me listen listen many of you will run sometimes this year and come and listen to this message again because the prophecy for open doors is not complete until there is a training to know how to become a person of stature you need the door to remain open for those behind you to come. There are giants on every mountain. That is why you are a warrior. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the race. You are not only a runner. When you are in the field, dressed like an athlete, but you are in the battleground, don't wear athletic clothes. You have to carry the regalia of a warrior. You are both a warrior, you are an athlete, and you are a keeper. Hallelujah. Hear me. For many of you under the sound of my voice here tonight and falling across the globe, the Spirit of God is depending on your consistency for the liberty of many people. Any laxity in your pursuit will not only cost you alone. The realm of the Spirit taught you to be your grandfather. He started on a good note. 
but eventually laxity and frustration. There was zeal, but no accurate knowledge of the precepts of the Spirit. So he could not survive the viciousness. Then it came to your father. Some of them did their best as far as they could go. Now the baton has come upon you. You may be young, you may be the last, but by no means the least. The mantle is still on you. God is counting on you right now. Will you be the one to end this cycle and start a new one? He said, are you the one or should we look for another? Are you the one who has come now? Are you the prophet we have been waiting for? Or should we look for another? Are you the apostle that our grandfather prophesied that a day will come in this city, a young man will arise with fire and power? Are you the one? Or should we expect another who is yet to come? Are you the businessman that prophecy has come upon that you will be the one through your resources to liberate nations? Hear me? The Bible says there remains a rest for the people of God. Any day your faith selects is the day you make your rest. It says let us therefore labor to enter that rest. And the way we labor is found in Jeremiah 6.16. It says to stand in the way. And then he says to see and ask for the old path wherein is a good way when you find it he said walk in it and for sure you will enter your sabbath please hear me as we prepare to round up tonight the spirit of the lord is speaking to someone i am still depending on you i am still depending on you i am still depending on you moses do not prolong prophecy by 30 more years because of the laxity in your training. When the prophecy came to Abraham, it was 400 years. Match the prophecy with the speed of your training so that you do not add 30 more years and make God look like a liar. If you are slow, you will delay prophecy and time will be added and men will suffer. You must be up and doing at a cutting edge to match up with what has said. He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. He opened the book to see where it was written that the captivity of Israel in Babylon would come. And when he found the time, he postured himself in fasting and prayer for 21 days until Gabriel was sent from heaven to come and bring him word. And while he was coming, the prince of Persia the spiritual wickedness that resides in the heavenlies he stopped him and he maintained in persistence an archangel Michael he came and it prevailed not and he had now come he said I am come to give you understanding he gave him understanding and he knew the times that the captivity of God's people would come to an end In this season, we must master the art of reading the writings on the wall. You must have the eyes of the spirit that when you see things written on the wall, you must discern what the spirit is saying. The Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith. Is it not in your Bible that the spirit speaketh expressly? The spirit speaketh expressly. It says that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. But the most important thing is that the spirit speaketh expressly. We must obtain grace that our eyes be washed with eyes of and that our ears be attuned to the frequency of the spirit to know what God is saying per time season let us walk after the order of the sons of Issachar the Bible says they are men that had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do as a result their brethren were at their command there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. 
this prophetic and apostolic mantle and I declare over your life in the name of the resurrected Christ who gave gifts to men that every door that has stood closed over you in the name of Jesus I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I speak to that door Ephata be open Ephata be open Ephata be open in the name of Jesus it says and thou O Lord will teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight i decree and declare in the name of jesus the strategy for victory that you have now received obtain it and last through your open doors last through your open doors last through your open doors no decline no retrogression in the name of jesus christ you hear me there are some of you that found certain treasures but they fell and they were missing the bible says the kingdom is like a man who had treasure but one fell the first thing he did was to light a candle and the second thing he did was to get a broom and with the candle and the broom he started searching i know it is somewhere i don't know exactly but with the candle that has been lit and the broom he started sweeping the Bible says that is the character of the kingdom you never find things until by light and the assistance of the prophetic alas master for it was borrowed he said where fell it and he said here I want to speak to someone because you see let me tell you restoration resides within the office of the prophetic whether it is the wife of the Shunam a Shunammite woman having her son back to life or the axe head falling or restoration to Samaria it is by a prophet that the Lord brings the nation of Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they are preserved he said I have spoken to you in similitudes I have multiplied visions even by the prophets I decree and declare in the name that is above all names everything that has left you but not by God in the name that is above all names i declare with accuracy and precision let it return back to you let it return back to you opportunities graces let it return back to you by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah please hear me the bible says everyone that knocks the door will open i told you when you knock it is because there is someone at the other side of the door and it is possible that he can be manipulated like the man who slept with his children to say you are my friend but it's too late I cannot open the door to give you what you want it takes the favor of God coming upon a man to compel people to bend over backwards for your sake and Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 says and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 be part and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her Psalms 44 and verse 3 they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their arm save them 44 and verse 3 it says but thou thy right hand it says because thou showed a favor towards them the favor of God is not about money the favor of God gives you access to the hearts of men the heaven even the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord but hear me the earth has he given to the sons of men if God says yes and men say no, yes remains in the realm of the spirit. It is the spirit and the bride that says come. Not the spirit alone. The system of operation within the cosmos will take the partnership of the spirit and a willing bride. If the spirit says Jesus come and Mary refuses to give her womb, he would have to look for another person again. She had to say be it unto me. Be it unto me. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. It says, be it unto me. Blessed is she that believes, he told her. It says, for there shall be a performance of the things that were spoken unto her from the Lord. Mary, on hearing that mandate, 
she said be it unto me according to your word and that happened for many of you the spirit has been saying come the spirit has said increase the spirit has said open doors the spirit has said fresh mantles but the bride that will stand in partnership with the spirit to echo what is being said has not spoken i stand as one sent because the spirit has said come i also say come for you in the name of jesus because the spirit has said rise i prophesy rise because the spirit has said shine i prophesy shine because the spirit has said go forward i prophesy go forward because the spirit has said don't go down i prophesy you shall not go down in the name of jesus christ and i speak to you according to job job 5 he said God will deliver you from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men every tongue that rises up against you I call upon the God of Jeshurun the one who rides upon the wings of the wind I decree and declare it falls in judgment in the name of Jesus Christ Can we take one minute to pray for Nigeria? Are we responsible enough to lend our contribution? We have to pray. The election is by the weekend. It is everybody's business. We are going to cry. We need God to arise as a deliverer. Are we together? Yes. I don't do partisan politics, but it is my desire. The prophetic and the apostolic represent the foundations upon which anything is built even in heaven where satan is not there the foundation of the heavens has the 12 names of the apostles written there god designed his system such that after christ the cornerstone the next that you meet is the apostolic and the prophetic that is a proper architecture for a building that is built such that the gates of hell shall not prevail that means for any nation that is built well the apostolic and the prophetic in partnership with the holy spirit have a right to speak let me show you a scripture am i wasting your time ezra chapter 4 and verse 16. we are praying for nigeria ezra chapter 4 give it to us please and verse 16. 16. did i get that right is it four or five? Ezra chapter six. My apologies. I just searched for it now quickly. Ezra chapter six and verse 14. The Bible says, And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered, not through the dexterity of their intelligence and architecture. They prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Edo and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel hear me the God of Israel commanded it but it took the prophetic and the apostolic to speak it while they were building that's how it works there are people who will be voting but there are prophets who will be speaking and there is a God who commands are we together now to prophesy alone and fold your arms, uh -uh, there must be builders. Even though God has granted Nehemiah favor, you must stand on the wall of Jerusalem to build. And the Bible says he built with such dexterity, with one hand he held the sword because of the presence of men like Sambalas and Tobias, the spirit of the Antichrist. You will always find them within a system. Can you sing for us the national anthem of Nigeria in one minute? Do you still remember? Because many people don't know the national anthem again. You must sing it whether you know it or not. All right, so. Arise, O
please listen. Please listen. Listen very carefully. It does not matter who wins. If people die, it is not worth it. Did you hear what I said? Whatever political party and what, whoever wins, if somebody has to lose her child, if somebody has to lose her life, if an innocent person has to be maimed up and down because of the wickedness of people, ladies and gentlemen, it is not worth it. The prayer, more than just praying and say, Lord, intervene, is let there be peace. Let every demonic manipulation of darkness to lead to death or violence. Lord, by the mercy of God, let it not happen. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice in one minute. Father, we cry for peace. Is someone praying? We cry for peace. We cry for peace. We cry for peace. Every polling unit, in the name of Jesus, we cry for peace. Lord, let lives not be lost in the name of Jesus. Let lives not be lost in the name of Jesus. Anyone planning wickedness, anyone planning violence, any groups of persons walking to kill, to steal, to destroy. In the name of Jesus, we release the forces of judgment. We declare in the name of Jesus that no plot to bring violence over the people in this land in the name of Jesus we declare it will not stand as responsible citizens in this nation we stand in partnership with heaven and we decree and declare grace hallelujah now I'd like you to pray one last prayer thank you for the time I'm stretching you a bit but this is the only chance we have to pray we are going to pray. Listen, it is not just the president that is required to change this nation. No matter how innocent or how wicked an individual is, I tell you sincerely, you need Jesus himself, the righteous, had to surround himself before he started with 12 disciples because he needed people he could send two by two. An individual on his own without a system that works. If you have a president that works and you have governors that are corrupt and wicked and devilish house members, don't forget that we're operating a democracy. So it matters. Everybody and every position for election is our business. Don't just focus on presidency alone. That is the mistake that many will make and then will allow all kinds of things a little living will spoil everything are we together now we are going to pray just one last prayer lord from the presidency down to local governments down to counselors down to house members the, you know at a state and federal level senators lord we pray anybody who does not mean this nation well root them out open your mouth and pray Anybody who does not mean our nation well, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare, may they not get to the throne. From the presidency to the state level, the local governments, house members, state and federal, Lord, we pray that once again you breathe upon our nation. And in the name of Jesus, give us a chance to rise again. In the name of Jesus Christ father we thank you for tonight we thank you because even for Nigeria we pray deliver us from evil in the mighty name of Jesus Saturday oh God we are the polls again to decide the next four years extending to the net the next eight years of this nation Lord we cry in the name of Jesus beyond our wills and our desires we tap into the wisdom of the spirit you are the one who has seen through the eons of time and oh god among the candidates presented and among all the people you are the one that knows those that will be able to lead us well we will not judge by the flesh we only cry by the spirit that you arise and help us as a nation 
in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we extend our prayers to all the arms and the tears of government we pray oh God that Nigeria like never before will have righteous leaders who are sincere and serious but Lord more importantly we pray and we cry unto you let there be no violence from the north to the south the east and the west the south 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 east south west north east north central north west let there be peace we pray for INEC we pray for the law enforcement agents we pray for the judiciary in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and cry let there be justice and equity I lend my voice, O oh God, with every man, woman of God, everyone standing in the position of priesthood, crying and praying over this nation. We lend our voices and we lift it as a united team. We cry, Maranatha, let your program come. Maranatha, let the purposes of God come. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that at the end of it, when all is said and done, please give this country peace Amen. give this country a chance to make progress Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. we thank you for the word that you have brought to us tonight Lord we declare that perpetually we will walk in the consciousness of your mercy Amen. perpetually we will walk in the consciousness of the spirit of prayer Amen. and Lord in the name of Jesus our hearts remain praiseful in the name of Jesus Christ and for everyone who is trusting God for a turnaround in one area or the other, in the name of Jesus, let this week beginning be your week. In Jesus' name I pray. Now for everyone who is here desiring salvation, I'm about to make the altar call. Let me your attention for a minute or two. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, hearing you teach, I have seen the need for Jesus in my life. Perhaps you were invited and you came from far and from there. And the many who are following from across the globe. Or you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I confess that my ways with God have not been right. I have derailed from the path of the Spirit and I need restoration. I'm going to count one to five. Our time is up. I want to request that you pick your bags, your Bibles, everything you came to church with. And as I count one to five, very boldly, don't wait for anybody to be the first. Make your way and come here to the front. God is speaking to one person. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. 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 Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Come. Come to Jesus. He says, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. He only keeps that which is committed unto him. In John chapter 17, he says, All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost, except the son of perdition, and that, that scripture be fulfilled. Come. You are about to step into the keeping hands of Jesus, even the son of the living God. If you are joining them, you have a minute more, please, very quickly, so that I lead you to pray. This is the wisest decision that you can make on this side of God's kingdom. Let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, thank you for making this bold declaration. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. May I request that you and those in all the overflows outside and then those who are following online who are making this decision, Perhaps you are listening to a rebroadcast and whilst you heard me teach, the Spirit of God began to convict you. It is never too late to make Jesus Lord of your life and it's my joy and honor to lead you as you make that confession of faith. May I request that you lift your right hand, all of you, above your head as a sign of surrender and please say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart 
as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go from grace to grace and glory to glory. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for this once. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare that based on your confession, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Now let me please request that you just move to my right where there are counselors who will have a word with you very quickly, just for a minute or two, and then you'll be back. Let's honor them as they go. My right, which will be your left. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's election on, on Saturday, but um, we're still going to have our miracle service for the month of February. So next week is going to be our miracle service for the month of February. Please invite everyone you can find and let's trust God for a time where the Lord will step in and do miracles in the lives of his people. Just a quick announcement. Thank you for your patience. The technical department, our technical and sound department is open for new members. They are particularly requesting those who have specialized skill in electrical and electronic installations. They are looking for electricians um, and then for troubleshooting electrical issues. They need more hands on that wise. So if you are here, you are a professional and you are looking for an opportunity to serve in the house of God, you are more than welcome to apply. All the individuals who are willing to serve on this wise, please do well to pick your application form at the PR desk just outside the main hall after the service praise the name of the lord and like you heard election is saturday please be safe and do well to cast your votes and um, we trust the lord for the very best for this nation we remain in prayer even as we do our due diligence and we know that god himself will help us in jesus name once again thank you all who have taken the time to come may the lord bless you and increase you in jesus name Please let's rise as we wrap up the service. Father, we thank you again for the privilege you have given us to hear and understand your word today. As we depart, we depart with your favor and your presence and your power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's share the grace together in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.